Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear parents, our children are a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they don't belong to us, they belong to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He gifted them to us, it means that He will ask us about how we raised them and how we treated them. A lot of the parents complain that they're not able to have a meaningful and healthy relationship with their own children. And unfortunately, I have a lot of young people who complain to me that their parents mistreat them, don't listen to them, even abuse them, call them names, and even worse, use religious texts for their own personal gain. Brothers and sisters, you know, our children see their mum and dad as their identity. They look at father as half of them, and the mother is their other half. If they look at the father, for example, and see that he is oppressive and corrupt, then they start hating that side of them. If the mother is the same like that, they hate the other side of them. If both of them are like that, the child begins to hate themselves. You won't see it at a very young age, but as they get older, they just want, they go silent, they lock themselves, they just want to escape because they want to find a new identity. They don't want to be known and attached to the identity of their mum and dad, brothers and sisters. This is a psychological thing, and the Prophet ﷺ was very sensitive about that. That's why he was merciful and compassionate to all the children. And we see a good example in Hassan al Hussein, his grandchildren. He was sitting down once when a Bedouin man entered with his children. The Prophet ﷺ kissed al Hassan al Hussein and showed them compassion, and as if they were everything in the world. The Bedouin said, Ya Rasulullah, I have 10 children. Wallahi, I've never kissed one of them or hugged any of them. The Prophet ﷺ put on a straight face and said to him, He is not one of us, whoever does not give mercy. My brothers and sisters, those children that we have, they want their parents to listen to them. Take it from me as a teacher and a counsellor. A lot of the young people say, I just want my parents to listen to what I'm saying. I just want my parents to listen to what my thoughts are, to my expressions, to my feelings. Give me some time. But the parents, I don't know what happens. Some of them, they get afraid. Some of them, they feel that they're going to lose control, maybe. Some of them, they take on the responsibility so much that because of their fears, they don't realize that they actually end up abusing their children. You know, brothers and sisters, whatever you call someone over and over again, they're going to become that person. So if a parent calls, for example, the child an animal, they're going to grow up to act like animals. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also told us, be good to your children and they will be good to you. So brothers and sisters, they're humans like you. As they get older and they become teenagers, give them some privacy and give them some respect as they give you. Brothers and sisters, you know, when we talk to our children and we just give them an ear to listen to them, even if we disagree with them, there's nothing wrong with that. You are actually building a relationship. What is a relationship? It is basically memories. What kind of memories do you want to have with your children? And here is a very good hint. Any time you meet with them and you're with them, talk about their interests. Show them that you are interested in their interests. Read about it. Go and help them go to the events that they are interested in. They might like horse riding. They might like fishing. They might like swimming. They might like, they might like soccer or footy or whatever it is that they like, even sewing or anything like that. Go with them and show interest. Even if you're not interested in it, I promise you, they will love you for life. Brothers and sisters, also talk with them on an emotional level. Why don't you talk about your life? Talk about your childhood. Talk about your feelings sometimes. You know what? Even as the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, did with his own son. You know the story when he saw the dream of him slaughtering his son. He went to him and said, Oh son, I see in my dream this and that. What do you think? He talked to his son as if his son was an adult giving his father advice. Brothers and sisters, this type of a relationship increases the memories between you. Very importantly also I want to say, children may not obey us all the time, but they never fail to imitate us. So they will look at their mum and dad, and as they grow up they will remember, how did my mum and dad treat each other? And that's how they're going to start treating their spouses. So if you conflict in front of them, that's okay sometimes, but make sure that you reconcile in front of them, to show them that this is how we reconcile and stay together. As for the single parents, it becomes a little bit more challenging. We understand. Emotional baggage is left behind, sometimes grief. What we have to be careful about is to remember that our children, they love both their mum and dad. Sometimes there is an absent parent as well. 
Our children, they long for their parents. And if we cannot give them what they need, we do what we can. If we cannot solve the whole problem, we can minimize the problem. One thing again for a single parent to do is to show that they are there for their children all the way. And very importantly, never talk badly about their other parent. Secondly, if there is any opportunity to connect them with them, help it and support it. No matter what your feelings are, no matter what's happened between the husband and the wife who have left each other, remember that it's still not over between your relationship and your children. When you help them have a relationship with both parents, they will love you more. It's better than for them to resent it and keep it inside and show it as they grow older. And again, I repeat, they don't always obey us, but they will never fail to imitate us. Now, when you've done everything right and you've done everything in your power, some children, subhanAllah, it just seems to all go wrong. In this case, Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah does not burden any soul with a responsibility and an obligation more than what they can handle. They will receive that which they put the effort towards for them. And the things that they do wrong will be against them. So do what you can. Sometimes our children go out of hand. My advice to you is always try and keep a string attached between you and them as much as you can because one day they might change and I will say, okay, I still have a connection with my mum or dad or with my parents. And remember Nuh alayhi salam, he didn't give up on his son even when the waves had to come between them. He kept talking to his son while he's on the ark until the wave came and took his son away from him. And even after that, he felt grief and he had to ask Allah, Oh my Lord, he is one of my family. But Allah told him, Oh Nuh, he has completely lost his way and is corrupt. So you can only do what you can, brothers and sisters. And don't burden yourself too much. It's not your entire responsibility. Some of it is upon the child as well, especially as they grow older. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our children on a straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep away bad company from them. And may Allah help us and assist us as parents to do the right thing. And remember, if you've done anything wrong to your children, sit down and say, I apologize. Say, I'm sorry.